What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a host with me, how to host a wine tasting with your friends. I'm gonna be bringing out some awesome cheese and food pairings to go with five of my favorite barefoot wines. If you're new to my channel, my name is Laura Nicholson. I love to do all things cooking, decorating, and cleaning. And if you are returning, it is so good to see you. All right, let's jump right into this video. So I'm only gonna be making about one or two recipes here at the house. The one thing I do wanna make because it goes so well with champagne is my truffled deviled eggs. You can make any type of deviled eggs depending on how you like to make it and then just add a little bit of this truffle oil in. And then I also picked up a little bit of truffle powder. I'm gonna add the yolk to a piping bag and pipe that into deviled eggs. I don't know what it is about using a piping bag. I always have, I'm not sure why, but you don't have to. You can totally use a spoon and just put that that in and then I'm gonna be dusting a little bit of that truffle powder right on top. I'm gonna to throw those in the refrigerator and get started on my salami flowers. I'm sure you guys have seen this before, but making salami flowers are literally the easiest thing ever. Just grab a champagne flute and you're just gonna cross over halfway every slice of salami until you can't fit any more in there. Once you're done, pop it off and throw a toothpick in it just to keep it all together. They do make your cheese plate look amazing. To get started on our massive cheese board, I like to clean the table and then I'm gonna be using a giant parchment paper to create what would be like a cheese board. To get started, I'm gonna be using these small bowls as placeholders for our wine and our decanters, as well as some little things that we tucking in there. But what I like to do is take all the cheeses and kind of evenly disperse them around the table. I like to start with the cheeses or things that are a lot larger, and then I scale down to like nuts and little cranberries and things like that. Since I already know where each wine is gonna go, I'm gonna be starting with our Chardonnay and our Pinot Grigio here on the left, and then on the right will be our Cabernet and our Sweet Red Blend. What I like to do is add the cheeses and the appetizers that go with those specific wines kind of stacked around them. That way, if you're drinking the Cabernet, you have your beef on crout down there and some heavier cheeses, whereas if you're drinking this Chardonnay or the Pinot Grigio, you have this truffled cheese here, a Manchego, something a lot lighter. And the other thing I would suggest is if you are going to be serving hot appetizers with wine, my suggestion would be because you are trying to focus on the wine flavor profiles, definitely serve stuff that can be ambient temperature. That way when you're biting into it, the flavors have kind of settled a bit and they're not completely overpowering the wine. Otherwise you're not gonna get the total effect of the wine profiles, which we're gonna go into in a minute. I would love to invite you guys to join me over on Instagram at Mrs. Lauren Nicholson, where I share things daily, whether it's cooking, recipes, decorating, more things about Napa Valley, wine tasting, what have you, just whatever's going on in the day. Um, I would love to share that with you as well. I try to post on here as often as possible, but um, I don't always get as much up as I'd like to. So definitely head over there and check it out. So the next thing I wanna add are some nice crackers that people can either dip into some of our dips or some nice little, uh, I like to use these either pita bread or anything that kind of has a low flavor profile to the cheese board. That way people can add their cheeses to that if they would like to. I'm also going to link all of the wines I use today down below. I'll try to add a couple little tasting notes to share the flavor profiles that we found this night, but the Cabernet is the rich and bold. It's one of my favorites. It's got a wonderful Cabernet, really 
really like it's my wine that is my go-to when I want to like cozy up by the fire the Chardonnay was delicious it has some great stone fruit to it and then I'll tell you a little more about the others down below So the next thing I'm gonna add are some placemats I made. I will link mine down below. I made them on Canva, very simple to make. You can do this any which way you like. I like to add the brand that I'm gonna be sharing with at the bottom, that way folks remember what brand they're drinking. It always makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna be tucking in some glassware. So I have two white wine glasses here and I have two red wine glasses. It, it doesn't terribly matter if you um, just have all the same types of glasses, like maybe you have all Bordeaux glasses or all burgundy glasses it doesn't matter since I'm already in the wine industry I already have a full setup of wine glasses needed for this tasting but honestly just pick anything that works for you so now that we have the table all set I'm gonna add a couple little plates on here and some napkins just for kind of keeping things clean and organized while we do our tastings I've already added my books to the head of the table I know I said we were gonna have eight people at the beginning of this video, but two unfortunately were unable to make it, so more for us. So once you're done setting the table and probably about 20 to 30 minutes before your guests arrive, I suggest pulling your white wines out of the refrigerator and decanting them. Now for the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Sweet Red Blend, you can decant these about 30 minutes before. This allows some of the tannic structure of the wine to open up and some of that beautiful flavor to really come through. If you're pouring straight out of the bottle, it's very tight. Think of it like anything else you put in a bottle and close the top it hasn't had any oxidation and hasn't touched the air yet so I always suggest giving it at least 20 to 30 minutes in a decanter so it can open up and breathe So for the white wines, like I said, 20 minutes before your guests arrive, pull them out of the refrigerator. You don't wanna serve white wines really cold. Unless it's summertime and you're on the porch and you're not doing a tasting, totally fine. But when you're trying to open up the flavor profiles of a white wine, you want it to be served at room temperature or maybe slightly chilled. So go ahead and decant those and get them ready to go. About five minutes before my guests are set to arrive, I like to pre-pour all the wines. This makes things nice and smooth and easy so we aren't pouring over people's shoulders and we can get right into the tasting when they arrive. I'm gonna be doing a small little reception with some champagne and our amazing truffle deviled eggs, and then we're gonna sit down and jump right into this tasting. Another fun idea you could do is actually pull the bottles from the table and put some little tags around each, numbering them one, two, three, and four, and do a blind tasting where you you and your guests use the books next to you to try to guess which varietals you are drinking. A varietal is basically a grape varietal, so it's Pinot Noir, Cabernet, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay. It's just the actual wine grape that you're drinking. For my champagne, I'm just gonna pour this right when my guests come in for them a nice truffle deviled egg and get started. I know it's a popular belief that tr wine and chocolate go together very well, but I actually don't enjoy having very sweet things while I'm doing a wine tasting, especially with a wine that doesn't have a lot of residual sugar or sweetness to it. So I put our sweets off to the side that I'll offer to my guests at the end of the tasting. That way our palates stay nice and clean and happy and not full of sugar. The one thing I would suggest is if you are going to be going from white wine to red wine or your guests are having a different beverage before the tasting, you can always offer them a glass of champagne to cleanse their palate and get ready for your wine tasting. Another tip I would give you is start with your lightest wine, so a Sauvignon Blanc, Champagne, a Pinot Grigio, a nice light wine, and then go into darker wine. So a Sauvignon Blanc is lighter than say a Chardonnay. And then from a Chardonnay, this sweet red blend or the Merlot is a lot lighter than a Cabernet. So these books will give you some great guidance on which wine to pour first and in what order. And it also will help you kind of look at the flavor profiles, whether they're tropical fruits or stone fruits or whether you're working with dark berries. This will really give you a good idea of the flavor profiles and in which order to put them in. It's all right. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this fun video and it gave you some fun tips on how to host a wine tasting and some great wines in which to get started with. If you guys are new, definitely subscribe. If you're returning, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I got, I got